that completes all the work on the non nose marijuana bills for today. And just for clarification, the minority reports are not to pass. All right. Take up 1392, an act to amend the main medical use of marijuana. Are we ready to jump into this? We need to take a five minute mental health break. All right, let's keep going. All right, we'll keep going. 
an email from Mr. Albert, and that's attached at the end in white. So the blue and the white, um, again, were submitted by uh, Mr. Albert. Um, there was also a suggestion made from Meadow for the committee to explore a stakeholder group um, to explore further many of the emerging issues coming from the medical marijuana industry. Um, such a group could be included in an amended version of this bill. Meadow also uh, urged the committee to seriously consider an amendment be made to change the status of Maine medical marijuana dispensaries to for-profit from non-profit. And I think that the committee had some questions for them about that change. Um, and then finally, um, Ms. Shanna Bellows, on behalf of Maine Matters, uh, in her testimony, she strongly encouraged the committee to amend the bill to explicitly prohibit the department from requiring healthcare providers to submit patient name, date of birth, street address, and other personally identifiable information via the, uh, I should say, online portal. Um, and there's no fiscal note that is required in this bill. Um, I did flag some potential legal issues um, within various sections of the bill, and I can either throw over them now or just interject as they come up as we're working through the bill. So um, it's up to the committee how they'd like me to proceed. Well, this is, so Representative Sanderson, Representative Sanderson is the sponsor of the bill. I know she's done extensive work on it. Um, so I guess I would like to ask her to be in her, her bill, um, if she has any particular way she'd like to proceed on that. Um, first of all, I think it would be important to have Mr. Albert come up and share his amendments and go over those first so we can get those out of the way. And then maybe while he's right there, we can start going back and forth on some of the changes and proposed issues for developments. Good afternoon, Ken Albert. Department, excuse me. Um, Center for Disease Control, Director and Chief Operating Officer. You have in front of you um, a couple of amendments that were proposed. I'd like to walk through with you. Um, the first one being to Section 19, 1392. Where are these amendments? They're on the white. On the white. The blue was what was submitted at the public hearing, and the white at the, at the very end of this packet, I think, is the most up to date uh, amended language that was submitted. Page 5 of the bill, section 19. Three registry identification cards. Since the advent of um, the, the initial intent of this was really to remove the registration from the requirement to receive a registry identification card, but what we noticed afterwards was that the um, you see on the third line there where the strike out of registered patients is, you see registered primary caregivers. And you recall that last session we allowed for employees of registered primary caregivers to um, also be required to be registered with the department. That language was never added in this particular section, so we're, we're um, suggesting an amendment to the bill to add the registered primary caregivers employee um, to this language as well. The second would be uh, section 21 of the bill. I think, I'm not sure where this occurred. It could potentially have been between the um, revisor's office and the department, but um, section 21, and I would, um, is 22 MRSA, and that, um, you receive the statute in its entirety. And I think it would be helpful for you if you move to section 2425 um, of the law. It was proposed here to be uh, repealed, um, but really what the department's intention was, was to, um, Remove the requirement that the department may not register issue a registered identification card to a qualifying patient who is under 18 years of age. That language goes on to, to provide, however, that a medical provider may not issue a certification card to a minor unless they use several things patient education, discussion with the parent or guardian, the risks and benefits. It's not the department's intention to uh, remove that responsibility from the medical provider uh, to discuss the risks and benefits with the patient. So we would add that language back in to the bill, but yet remove 
uh, the requirement that the department issue a registered identification card to the minor. Next would be section 24. The last um, section of that language, um, I would say two or three lines up at the bottom, um, this is a requirement that the department issue a registered identification card to we're eliminating the registered patient again. The, the, the bill really cleans up the requirement to um, involve the patient with the department. To register primary caregivers, to employees of the registered primary caregivers, and then it goes on. And you'll see you'll see a point where it says cards expire one year after date of issuance. The department wants to end that paragraph there. As the language goes on to, to say, except that the date of the issuance of the expiration date of the registered primary caregivers identification card must be the same as the issuance of the expiration date on the patient's registered identification card. We no longer issue patient registered identification card, nor do we have that information available to us. Um, so it, that's old language and it needs to be repealed. <coughs> I would also go back, um, Representative Patin's questions of me um, during the work session regarding uh, section one of the bill, um, and I think I probably testified at that point that was, there was a question in my mind about whether or not there was an incorrect citation there because, as Representative Patin pointed out, there was language in section, uh, I'm sorry, Title 16, section 806, really was about um, investigatory information from law enforcement with regard to abuse and neglect of children and or sexual offenses. And so I'm back, and it's actually it's 805, um, and again, um, that the language uh, 805 was provided to you. Um, that's is that TAN, I believe. Yep. That is the TAN packet. So 805 creates exemptions. When information may be shared, um, exceptions. I'm sorry. When information may be shared, and it goes down through several several paragraphs. Um, to another criminal justice agency, um, to, a, to a person and a lawyer, to the accused and, the, and their attorney, to a court, to the Secretary of State, and so on. And we have received advice from the Attorney General's office that in order to receive, in order to avoid um, uh, law enforcement agencies waiving um, the confidentiality um, under the Freedom of uh, Access Act <coughs> to um, to their investigatory reports that we should include, if they want to share them with us for purposes of administrative management of investigations, that we should include um, the Mini Medical Marijuana uh, Program within the ambit of the exceptions. And so I apologize for the wrong citation there and w wish to correct that now. And as I said in my testimony, there were several parts of the summary that were actually inaccurate. Um, I just want to make that point again that paragraph six of the summary is not is not correct at all. Neither is paragraph ten. I'm on the summary of the bill itself. I understand there are several other proposed amendments from Representative Sanderson and others that uh, the department will be happy to entertain at this time. The, uh, yes, Representative Gatine. I want to ask you a high level question. And, and, and um, a couple of my colleagues on this committee have done a tremendous amount of work over the last couple of weeks, uh, much more work than I have <laughs> um, on this. And, and I really want to get a sense as to what we're where we're going this afternoon and where we're going in the next week as we try to get this wrapped up. And, and let me just sort of, I'm going to play my cards and lay my cards out here because I think I probably had this conversation with a lot of the people sitting in this room. We, this is in really simple terms. We've got three bills in front of us now that are what I would call, you know, almost like, each one of them is almost like an omnibus bill with a lot of different pieces to it. We've got Representative Sanderson's bill, we've got the department's bill also introduced by Representative Sanderson, we've got 
uh, Senator Samuel's bill, and when we talked about these bills um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, again, Senator Brakey, who was one of the people who's done an awful lot of work on this, you know, was, was seemed to be pulling together, you know, trying to pull together some something that we could all agree on that satisfied, you know, facilitated the concerns of a lot of the people in this room. And, and, and I'm trying to figure out, what are we, where are we going to go tonight and where are we going to go as, as we go into the next week? Because I'm just going to say, I've, I've said it to most of the people in this room, issues in these bills and the other bills we have in front of us that, that have a fundamental, they're really based upon, you know, patient access and patient rights, you know, the hospital bill we worked a little bit today, the, um, um, uh, the build up people with disabilities that we still have in front of us. You know, I'm, I'm super interested in dealing with those issues on their own. But to me, a lot of these other bills really seem to have a lot to do with the landscape, either between the dispensary model and the caregiver model, and the interface between the department and, and, and the various business models. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll just be really, really honest, knowing that a big conversation in this state around legalization is looming, whether it happens out there or in here or over there, it's happening. I am really, I'm not gonna say I'm interested. I'm really loath to do things in this room that really do, are really more about changing the landscape, changing the landscape as we go into the legalization conversation. So I'm just letting folks know, I don't think I'm going to be willing to support the governor's bill. The department. The department's bill. I think current. Sorry. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be willing, I'm willing to support a bill that most of the interested parties are in agreement on if it comes to us. Or I'm willing to say no to all of these bills uh, and deal with them next year or deal with them in a couple of years. Um, so again, as we have what I think is going to continue to be a relatively complicated and detailed conversation, I just want folks to sort of know where I stand on this stuff. I'm, I'm perfectly willing to sit here tonight for as long as we need to and work this bill or the other bills. I'm ready to vote against this bill. And if there's something real important in this bill that needs to go, you know, they can be brought into Representative Sanderson's bill or in Senator Saviello's bill, do that, do that too. But, you know, to sort of deal with, here are the department's issues in one bill, and here's these issues in another bill, and here's these issues in another bill. I, I just don't think that's a place where I'm going to be. I'm just letting folks know. So if the idea is that we're going to work the department's bill for a while and try to get a vote on it and then table the other bills, I'm probably not going to be there. Um, with that, and I'm just letting all my colleagues and friends know that. Can I respond? Yep. I, I think that um, the department has always been in a challenging position to represent the team with regard to this program because um, it's we're not in a situation of being able to sit down with all the parties um, at the table and try and, and hammer out the department's needs with regard to the administration of this program. So that's why, um, for the past couple of years, I've come before this committee with bills that kind of clean up the language, clean up the bill. Um, there's some clean up in here, and there were some proposals in here that would allow us to, um, for instance, um, the compliance pieces. Um, right now, as it stands, for a dispensary or a caregiver, there are no intermediate sanctions. It's all or none. And I don't think that's fair to a caregiver or to a dispensary. Um, so, uh, and so I think this is the department's this is where we come when we need the legislature's assistance in helping us to administer a program that is as complex as this is. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why I'm looking forward to thank you. Okay, that's We're going to team. Yeah, and I, um, I think I have appreciation of the position that you're in on that issue. And really what I'm just telling you, what I think is trying to be a very honest way, is I think those are issues that need to be addressed. I'm willing to live with the status quo a little bit longer, um, knowing what's looming in the future. Um, and if, again, if, if people can come together and, and get to a place where we're all comfortable on the issues around inspections and 
you know, regulation of, of either one of the two business models. I'm willing, I'm willing to do that now, but I'm also willing to live with the status quo for a bit longer, um, you know, as, as, as these other issues. And again, I'm just really just trying to be transparent about where I am um, on these issues as we, as we move forward. I'm, I'm not trying to minimize or, or, or debate you or argue with you about the position of anyway, because I do agree that, uh, you know, the problems are rough spot here. Thank you. Ten minutes to five, Friday afternoon. Most of the people in this room have been sitting here all day. And after they've been here all day, now we have, and we've been working on these week on these bills, and we're very close in many ways, except for maybe a couple areas, to agreement with the parties. We have some agreement we still have some not so far together but it seems it seems rather a shame to me that after these people have sat here all day we have the house chair of this committee saying he's not interested in I, I, I don't want to I don't want to cast aspersions on no 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 let me finish please I'm not meaning to be dis disrespectful. In, in, um, in, in essentially working these bills or having a landscape change in anything, unless it's either a comprehensive package. I would just like to say that I feel as though if that's how Representative Bikin felt, then maybe that's information we could have known about earlier in the day. So we could have determined, are we ready to really sit down, roll up our sleeves, and roll these into one package? Or are we going to take them one by one and maybe put them off for another day so we didn't keep all the individuals who are sitting here, here all day? And, and that's... Um, that's all I had to say. Mm -hmm. Representative Gibson. I'm willing to sit here as long as it takes to work through these bills. I, 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 I didn't mean to, that's, if, if, if you took, if you okay. mean, me not willing to sit here and work through these bills, I apologize, because we can sit here and work, and work through these bills. Um, and I'm ready to vote on, I'm ready to vote on tonight. Sanderson. I would make a suggestion that we we work the department bill separately. Any other bills, those can be up for rolling into to packages together. I don't think we're going to get to that today. Um, but but I really do think that we've had Mr. Albert here all day, or most of the day. Um, we should be working this bill with him um, and and get through it. I'd be happy to go through the changes that he and I discussed this morning in this bill and where we've come to a consensus on or or as close to consensus on a couple things as we're ever going to be um, and just go through that with the committee. Okay. All right. So if you're looking at the bill directly, on page one, section one. There was some real concern about, on, on part of the um, stakeholders in this process, about section one, one A, and where the, the gathering of intelligence and the investigative record information um, is used in the operation and oversight. I heard several indications that people were wondering if this was going to be collected and kept and, and used in a file. However, that is not the department's intention. So we have an opportunity to change this language now to read um, on the bottom sentence would be used in the management of a current investigation pursuant to the main medical use of marijuana. Can you 
um, terms of can you spell out for us um, what different what so what affected uh, effectively that amendment does? What that amendment does is if there is an active investigation um, on an individual who is either being investigated for for violations of the Maine Meth Police and Marijuana Act, that information can be shared between the department and law enforcement. Yes, the language of change in the bottom sentence where it says used in the operation and oversight, that will change used in the management of a current investigation pursuant to the main medical use of marijuana. Act. So rather than authorizing for regular operation and oversight, this would be exclusively the case of the COVID investigation? Yes. Just, just to clarify, also with the change that it's moved to section 805 and out of 806? Yeah. All right. Continuing on. Okay. Um, section. Section 11 H depending on what we do with another bill, that could be a moot point. So I'll leave that up to the committee, whether we want to just delete it now. Okay, in section 13, there was a lot of concern around the new language that says, or a municipal official to further the business of the municipality. With conversations with Mr. Albert this morning, um, we can change this to, or a municipal official to enforce municipal code. That was the intent of the department. And I know, um and that will appear three places in the bill. And I know in some of our conversations with some of the, uh, the representatives of the caregivers, that seem to, at least from our conversations with those particular individuals, that that, that seemed to um, address their concerns. Was my, my, understanding, my understanding that the concerns were the vagueness of it and how it could be uh, interpreted in, in ways that may not be intended. So this specified as about uh, municipal code, enforcement mm -hmm. municipal codes, and validity of the concerns. Senator Haskell. Oh, I'm sorry. Would that definition include uh, fire hazard? Would that include uh, those kinds of things? You know, when I think codes, I think building codes. And uh, I might not think what you know, another reason that people want to, you know. I've heard that it might include even something as out there as making sure someone has a proper electrical code. Uh, that, well, that, <laughs> I see, that would be a municipal code. Yeah, yeah, I think that makes good sense. I, don't know, I, I get that. Yeah. I also want to be, be sure that if there is a, uh, a municipal official with a concern, 
uh, about fire hazard that they would be, you know, with forest fire on the way, I'd you know, be able to do that. It wouldn't have to be just building codes. When I see the word code, I just wonder what that uh, entails, what that includes and what it might not include. Is there someone who can, can you? Can you no, I can, from, from the department's perspective, this, and this is with um, the municipalities really uh, encouraging us to move in this direction, to allow the municipalities to enforce the code, the municipal code that they have, ordinances, local ordinances, um, around um, fire safety, for example. All right, thank you. Do, does it make a difference whether or not we use the word code or ordinance, are they essential synonymous? Or is I would look to you clerk for that. Okay. I can look into the difference for a language review. Okay. All right. <coughs> Representative Sanderson, if you could continue along. That change will happen in both in not only section 13, it will change in section 14, and it will also change in section 33. Is correct. All right, the next one is one that was of great concern. Section 15, this is the piece that removed a family member to cultivate and act as a primary caregiver for a member of their family or household without registering. Um, the language was deleted by the department, but we are going to amend this. A family member, primary caregiver, will, you'll be able to cultivate for a fam, up to two family members. You must register, but the department will waive the fees. Yeah, I have a question for Mr. Allard about that. I know we were discussing this this morning. Uh, one question that was raised was, um, obviously here in this committee, we'll be aware of these changes being made. Someone who is growing for a son or a daughter, not registered, um, because they're not registered, we don't know necessarily to contact them to let them know that that's changed and they need to register. <coughs> how, do, how do we that they know and, and are not then in uh, out of compliance with the law. Well, I think the basic premise in law is that there's no ignorance of the law. Um, but we would certainly do um, a lot of outreach as we do with rule promulgation that will come after this. Um, reach out um, uh, through the various associations um, and through our own um, our own means uh, to communicate this change. The other piece of this is that. Um, to the extent that occurs, Senator Berkey, you know, our goal would be to provide technical assistance to the individual and have them register. It's not an immediate, you know, sanction for what for the violation under the facts that you raised. If that individual, you know, if providing the technical assistance uh, did not result in modified behavior by the individual, then it would be a different story. But we would try and get them registered and, and again we would uh, and I also I had a question and it really escaped me. Um, Representative Sanderson. Thank you. This, I also talked with Mr. Albert this morning regarding a family member who, who may have to exceed that sufficient cap. And um, he assured me that um, they, there could certainly be exceptions made to that <coughs> on a case by case basis. That, that's right, representatives. And again, you know, especially you know, if you get a, a, a two-parent home, or you know, we can work out some type of arrangement with the family if there's if they have more than let's say two children that they're cultivating for, or two young members that they're cultivating for. <coughs> we also add that you know, family member needs to be defined, and we you know, we spoke about that. Um, and um, the department would encourage that, that within that definition that we will, um, as I understand the sponsor to require that that definition be promulgated um, through the rulemaking process under the uh, Maine Administrative Procedures Act, um, that we also require that, be, that family member be a resident of the state of Maine. Yes. No, you, yes. 
that would not be uh, right. That would not be correct. Um, so, my so is the intent behind this. So I know we were just dealing with another bill, which I believe we voted on not to pass, but with a letter about disclosure of who registered caregivers are in that case where I mean, so we we asked the department to just respond for the police were to call to confirm that someone's registered as a caregiver or not. Is this because of those situations where if there's a question about where, whether someone is legally growing or illegally growing and if the police were to call and say, hey, we got complaints about this person, it turns out that maybe they're in compliance, they're growing for two people, but you don't have them registered, so you can't tell them one way or the other whether they're, it's a legal grow or an illegal grow. Is that, is that the intent? That, that is the intent of this bill. Um, the, the way that the exceptions were before, um, it, it, um, it resulted in um, law enforcement um, seizing. Uh, marijuana for somebody who actually fell within an exception. Um, it was uh, really was a lot, it was a burden on law enforcement and obviously on the individual who had their marijuana seized um, because they weren't either they couldn't check it through Metro or um, they weren't registered with us when they called um, to confirm whether or not. Um, and, and we don't we don't know over the phone if they actually <coughs> meet the exceptions. Although that somebody could be alleging that they're meeting the exceptions, we don't know the fact pattern there. So we. That law enforcement's hands. This will this will eliminate that problem, mm -hmm. and still not require the individual to pay to have to pay for that registration. A senator has. We're ready. If we're ready. Before we move on, can I just go back to section twelve and understand that? Okay. Yes. This is. Um, 